watching my videos, a couple things you're going to see with me working and on the job and doing different things is my jumpsuit and my tools, tool belt, suspenders. Now, I started wearing the suspenders because I didn't like the weight of the tools dragging on my pants. And the difference is beautiful, perfect. Doesn't drag on my belt. I don't have to worry about having another belt and this and that. The jumpsuit I started wearing a few months ago, I bought it, Amazon, $100. It's flame resistant, has the safety stripes on it, and pocket, plenty of pockets, place to put your pen or marker or whatever you're gonna use. Big pockets, so if you did want to put, if you didn't have your tool belt on and you wanted to have a couple tools in your pocket, again, they're not dragging on your pants. Not adding extra weight. They're not putting holes in your jean pocket. Things like that. So, what I do is, I keep this kind of modular. I have pouch, pouches that will come off and on. I have bigger pouches for wire nuts and things, depending on what job I'm doing at the time. This is just a little, probably, I think it's a AWP, so I think I got it from um, Kohl's, I mean Lowe's. So this one, I got a roll of tape, a couple wire nuts, keep my tape measure, because I'm still in the rough in phase right now with the wiring. My tool belt, I try to keep it, now even the tool belt is a Velcro, so it comes off easy enough. If I want to take the thing off and tape, I have a tote that I'll carry tools in. If I got to go into a service job, I can just take this, put it on my in my tote, and I don't have all the suspenders and everything going with it. But what we have here is pretty basic, husky. I like this because it had the Velcro and it can come on and off easy enough. I'm not a big fan of keeping the tape measure on the outside. I think it just loads too much on one side. So what I have here is pretty simple. We have a set of dikes, diagonal cutters, Klein, eight inch, typical standard electrician tool, nine inch linesman's pliers, again, Klein. They work, fun, they work great for what I use them for all the time. I've had them, used them for years. Wire stripper, again, a Klein. I like the shape of this one. Some people like the shape of the more curved handles. This one I, I think is small enough, nice, it works fine for me. Now, when it comes to screwdriver selection, we have our Phillips, which we use a lot. Number two Phillips. We have our regular straight screwdriver. Use that a lot. Now, a number two square tip. Just bought a brand new set. Square tip, number two. Square D and some other manufacturers, especially Square D though, they're breakers, they're ground lugs, they're neutral bars, are a number two square tip or straight. The number two is a more positive connection to the screw and it's a must have if you use Square D products. And there's other ones too. Now, I have a number three Klein square tip because even though everybody likes to use a number two, a Phillips or a straight head on cutler hammer breakers that have the square hole, it is really a number three. So you're either going to round over your screwdriver or strip the screw head and not get a good tighten on your breaker your breaker connection. So, to me, this is a basic, what you need for most roughs of um, Romex, service panel stuff, things like that, everyday products. I do have a tote that I carry with me, and I'll show you that in a second. Now that, is the tools that you use a lot, but don't necessarily need to have on you all the time. These tools 
for Romex connectors, BX connectors, MC connectors, pipe connectors, number two. And the two that go on my front, right where my hand goes, are my flathead and my number two square. They seem to be for screw panel screws and all that stuff. And you can even have a number one straight head because the 632s on plugs and switches are really number one square heads and straight. They're not a true Phillips screwdriver slot. Even though we use Phillips screwdrivers to tighten them in and everything else, we use screw guns with, with Phillips tips. They're truly a number one square tip and screwdriver, straight screwdriver. So that's a big difference in, you know, using the proper tools and using the tools that we have normally used in the past and just adapting. So now I'm gonna, I'll get my tool tote and I'll set it up and I'll show you what I have in there. So this being my little Husky tool tote that I carry other daily necessities that I may need but don't really need in my tool pouch all the time. You know, a trusty pair of gloves when you're working with old BX or insulation or other kinds of things. It's always nice to have a pair of gloves. This little plastic tote, I carry a couple headlights that make it easy, you know, if one dies, the batteries, I have the other one handy. Or if I have them working with somebody and they don't have one, or climbing in attics, it makes life easy. Electrician's hammer. You see how the difference is? This extended nose and the longer handle. The reason with this extended nose was when they used to hammer in boxes, you can get into a, a standard four inch square round box without banging all this on the edge of the box. A climb tool again. A pair of channel locks. Always need that. Maybe I'll have two in here at some time. Yep, we got a little pair here. Lock nuts and connectors and things. Sheetrock knife to, you know, strip wire, cut insulation, cut sheetrock, whatever we need to do. We have our pen tester and our multimeter because you can't always test, you can't always trust a pen tester in a case to help protect it. Now these are good for pulling staples and nails and things where you may have to. Sometimes you put a box in the wrong place, sometimes the box breaks, sometimes you gotta pull staples. These just give you a little more leverage, easier to do. Now this is a Klein tool. It's made to tighten and loosen lock nuts. Half inch, three, qu three quarter, and you can put it on the lock nut in a box and use this to loosen it. You can use a, a pliers on it, you can use your hand on it if it's not tight, they're really that tight, or put them on. You put it, it has a hole, so your wire, you can have wires come through your hole, put, put it on your lock nut and tighten it. And like I said, you can take a pair of channel locks, put it on there, and use it to give yourself leverage to tighten. Sometimes it's hard to get into an old work box or something like that. This makes it easier. That's the purpose of that tool. Now we have crimpers. I do have ratchet crimpers in my truck, in my big rolling toolbox. But for a lot of things, these crimpers are fine. Gives you a little extra cutter, and you can crimp insulated and non-insulated connectors on wires. Keyhole saw for old working, cutting in sheetrock, cutting holes out, making uh, hand holes to run wires in. Need that tool. We have our nine inch torpedo level. Needs a new magnet. I'm probably gonna get a new magnet and glue it in there. But you gotta have one or two of these. Big fat mar magic marker for doing roughs. Marking out boxes and plugs, switches, 
other devices, panels, adjustable wrench. Sometimes you need to be a little more precise with what you're going to tighten or loosen with a bolt or a nut. So you got to have an adjustable wrench. We have 9 volt battery for our testers and things. Have some tape. Had, them, had it out for another job. It ends up in here. Have some Teflon tape because I was doing some things that needed Teflon tape. And another adjustable wrench for tightening and loosening things. We have a PVC cutter. Sometimes we're working with PVC, doing a pool, or an underground feed to a garage, or whatever you're trying to do. It's nice to have, you just snip to where you want it. If the ground, you know, you don't need to have your hacksaw and go crazy with it. Thinner cabinet screwdriver, because there are bus bars and things. Screws that you're gonna need a smaller straight head on than this one that you carry normally. A roto, a roto stripper for cutting armored cable, BX cable, MC cable. Now you just put your wire in there, you tighten, boom, spin it. You don't have to hacksaw it. You don't get a nasty edge like you would if you're cutting with a pair of dikes and having to trim things. Nice tool. <clears throat> Long needle nose pliers. Sometimes you're snaking in the walls, you got a single gang box hole. You can actually reach in and grab the wire you're trying to pull down if you got it hanging in there. Or if you're trying to find a wire in the wall, you can grab it off to the side. Or pulling into an old work box, whatever you may have. Just gives you a little extra reach for alarm wires, regular wires, things like that. I do have a straight head, a straight one in my truck too. That's a long. I also sometimes carry extra blades for my fine tool, which is right here. And this blade will probably get put in there, but I had it in here because I was using it for something before. And then there's, very, there's some, some nuts and screws and things that... And I got a couple ground tails. I got some wall dog sheetrock screws because I was doing some surface piping and sheetrock the other day. So those are in there. Got some redheads. Things like that. Probably need to be cleaned out. There's some junk in there. Got a four inch square bike cover. You never know when you might need that. I also have in here a 5 16 bit because ground screws and things you can use that with a lot. And I have. <clears throat> So the other thing I carry in my bag is this little 12 volt Milwaukee gun. A little screw gun, works fine. It's not an impact or anything, but for putting boxes in, for putting switches and plugs in and out, things, ground, ground bars, things like that. Works great, nice little tool. Lightweight, fits right in the box with everything else. And just gives me a, little, a, a screw gun if I need one. So that's what I keep in my tote. It's tote, husky. I think I got like two or three for, you know, not too expensive. And it just gives me something quick to carry my stuff and carry in and out of the job. So that's that. And I'll do a tour of my truck one day when it's clean and I have time. So that's it for today. Thanks.